Awesome. Welcome to today's virtual home buying seminar. This is, uh, I think, installment number four or five in a series that we're doing for the balance of the year every other Thursday. Uh, we do post these out on michiganfirstmortgage.com under events. So if you'd like to look for future agenda items, please make sure to check it out on our website. My name is Dan Sugg. I am the Chief Mortgage Lending Officer here at Michigan First Credit Union. And uh, my pleasure every day is to help serve our 180,000 members in their home ownership dream. Sometimes that's refinancing and saving some money or taking some cash out, but mostly it is achieving that dream of home ownership, whether it's for the first time or for your next one. So I want to welcome everyone to the call and thank you. We're going to review the agenda. We're going to introduce our speakers here in a second. We're covering a topic that maybe um, really doesn't get enough attention is you have a home and you want to move either to a new home, a larger home, a different neighborhood, or maybe even downsize. Maybe you're my uh, stage of life where my kids have grown and gone and, and the house maybe is just a little empty. So we're going to work through all of the things that maybe we thought of or we didn't think of when it comes to selling your home in those ideas. And then uh, we're gonna spend about 20 minutes of our time today really talking about those tips and tricks, both from the real estate side and from the lending side, and the things you need to consider when uh, moving from one home to the next. Uh, we'll then spend about the last five minutes with uh, some closing remarks, really three things from each of our guests today that they feel is important for us to learn and remember. And then if we have time, we'll cover some question and the answer. I do wanna tell you that we are on mute today and that um, if, if you don't need your camera on, you certainly don't have to have it on and we are gonna jump right into it. So with that, I'd like to introduce our first guest. Uh, Al Crawford is a loan officer with Michigan First Mortgage. He sits at our Evergreen office with me every single day, pretty much. And Al has been in the mortgage business for over 30 years. So Al, let the members know what you what makes you special and really what, uh, what you bring to the table every day. Thanks, Dan. Um, I think really for me, it's the fact that I've been in the business for a long time. I've seen, I, I, I would say not everything, but I've seen the majority of, of things that happen. And I think everybody has a specific story. And I think I'm really good at listening to that story and really trying to identify the true needs of the borrower um, whether it be buying or, or, or uh, refinancing. Yeah, we do, you know, I, I say it to a lot of our team members and, and certainly owning a home is a privilege. It's not a right. It is something you have to earn and attain and working with a, a true mortgage professional in that process certainly helps that along with a real estate professional too. You know, uh, I learned this saying this week, mortgages are like fingerprints. They all look the same, but uh, they're all just a little bit different. And certainly they all have, uh, if you go through that journey, they all need assistance. So thanks, Al, and uh, we'll jump into our tips and tricks in a second. Uh, also with us on the phone uh, and here on the webinar with us today is Mark Romano. Mark is the broker owner of Really Executive's Hometown Dream House Team. Love the name, love the home ownership dream uh, piece you have in there, Mark. And uh, reading Mark's bio here, uh, which is on the screen, certainly has been in the business for a while and certainly I think is one of the true professionals that has stood the test of time. But I love the reference around family because, you know, in the credit union, we do consider all of our members family, uh, whether whether they are first time home buyers or or are looking at retirement. So, Mark, what can you tell us about what you offer to your members? Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, the same thing you're just basically going over. I treat everyone like family. I've always been treated like family um, throughout my career too. I grew up in the real estate business. My father owned the company before I did. Um, and it's just been passed on down along with all of his um, lessons. Uh, I've been doing this for so long that I've run into many, many situations, which gives me the experience to know how to deal with anything that may pop up in the future. Um, I like to talk a lot. I like to sit in front of people I like to actually um, have a, a double meeting when I try to list a home too. So I'd like to go by, sit down with people, talk to them about their needs and their wants, and then maybe after that, go forward with the paperwork. Yeah, and Mark, where, where is your office located? Um, we actually have six locations. The one that I work out of most is in Shelby Township at 22 Mile and Hayes. 
Yeah. Um, so for somebody that lives on in Plymouth, I call that the east side. So I'm not sure. East side. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the east side. We it's actually crazy. have an office in Troy, an office in Port Huron, an office in Washington Township, and an office in Chesterfield Township. Yeah, very good. Awesome. You know, I went to my first McDonald's ever in life in Port Huron, Michigan. So I grew up in the thumb. <laughs> very cool. All right, let's jump into it, guys. We're going to talk about uh, everything we never really thought about or maybe we thought about and had questions about when it comes to selling your home. So I'm going to start with Mark. Um, you know, Mark, you know, there's a lot of reasons why somebody might move. Uh, it could be, like I said earlier, downsizing. It could be looking for a different location. How far in advance should we start thinking about the house part of moving, the current house I own and what I should do to sell it? I feel that every situation is definitely different because people have different goals and different desires. So that's the reason I like to do the two-step listing process. I like to set an appointment with my clients to go sit in front of them and have a conversation with them, feel them out about why they're thinking about moving, and then create a plan based on what they are uh, thinking about. Yeah, two steps. And so, um, so let's say I'm, I'm the consumer and I'm thinking, hey, I need to move. What, what, is, what is the first step? Is it contacting a professional or should I start looking around my house and seeing the things that maybe I should do before I even talk to that person? No, I think that's part of the two-step listing process too. Not only do I sit and find out why their want, why their want of the move is, but I like to go through their home and give them tips and tricks about what they can do to possibly create a more saleable house, and even spend a little bit of money to create a better net when we're done. Um, there are a lot of little things you can do. Even colors in a house can make a huge difference. Um, there was a study done by Zillow that said painting a bathroom sky blue can make as much as a $5,000 difference in a sales price. Wow. Sounds crazy, but they've actually done the um, research over the last three years and that's what they came up with. There's different things like that. And sometimes just decluttering a home can make a huge difference in the sale. Yeah. And I think the real estate professional such as yourself offers that fresh perspective uh, and, and an honest uh, perspective of what your home looks like. It may be comfortable for you, but maybe not seen by that as other people too. So uh, I think more important even probably than just doing those little things is avoiding the big spend that you're not going to get return on. Um, oh, that's right? for sure. Yeah. Cool. All right. We'll come back to that. So Al, thinking along those yes, lines, um, you know, of that pre-planning part of it, how can somebody that's thinking about a move what, what should they be thinking from a financial perspective? Well, Dan, I think that the, the number one thing I think of is that what is the plan? What, what are they, why are they selling the house? Are they, up, are they upgrading? Are they downsizing? And most importantly, do they qualify? Um, I think that what we never want to have happen is somebody that wants to sell their home and they don't have an action plan as to how they're going to do this next transaction. Um, and, and that's something that's so critical that has to go hand in hand with actually listing your home. Yeah, we had talked about on a previous episode of people getting in, caught into that fever pitch of making offers and offering over and appraisal guarantees and then all of a sudden realize, hey, I don't, I can't even have the money to do that. How am I going right. to get, get that done? It's, it's, it's exciting time, certainly, but also one that's fraught with, with mistakes. So when you talked about um, motivation, you know, is it always the peer approval like, I have to sell my home first, a contingent, or, or how does that work? Is that for me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that they have to have an, a basic understanding of what's going on with their market. And that's where Mark comes into play to give them the realistic reality of if you want to sell it aggressively, how should it be, should it be priced? And then ultimately having a game plan as to what is it you're going to clear from that transaction that you're going to put towards the other sale. Now, if you have other, other money, that's fine. But in many cases, people are using the equity from the sale for this new transaction. And that's got to be something that's got to be taken into consideration when qualifying for that um, new mortgage. Yeah, you make a great point. I did read recently that the median single family home price increased 11% um, across the first quarter uh, in most markets today. You know, certainly the value of that house you're sitting on because of the way the market is, is growing. And people are seeing that opportunity with 
the decreased rates to maybe even buy more house right um, and then they currently have um, or maybe buy into a different neighborhood that's great um awesome all right well switching back to mark um we talked about you know that two-step appointment and we touched on a little bit like what improvements help so i know boy if it was just as easy as painting a bathroom to sell a house but i'm thinking there probably is some more tips that you may have around the things you should do to your home and where you'll get the most return yeah, the most return has always historically been with kitchens and bathrooms, of course. Your kitchens got to shine, your countertops have to be clear of anything. Um, too much, I guess, is the best way to put it. If you want it to look like a home, you don't want it to look like a house. So we do want to clear the countertops, but we also want to make it so that people can see that it's a usable kitchen, too. Um, we can declutter bedrooms. We can take some things out, maybe put it in the garage, or even better, get a storage unit and put some of that overflow into the storage unit. Um, I think a lot of uh, the front, um, the first impression is incredibly important. Um, just having the grass trimmed up properly and edged, have a couple of flowers out front so you've got some color, um, making sure that the front door is painted. It all sounds like small things, but it's the small things that add up to a better net in your pocket. Um, there's many things we can do in a basement too. Sometimes it'll smell musty. We can get rid of that must smell um, with different things, either to cover it up or to clean things up. Um, any mold that's immediately uh, seen, we need to get rid of. Um, try to get that uh, thrown out, um, painted over with kills, which does get rid of the mold. There's a lot of different things we can do. The market has been incredible for quite some time. Um, really since they lifted the restrictions with COVID, we're just now starting to see a small um, slowdown. So there's buyers out there that have been trying that haven't been able to buy a home. Now's the time to get out there and do it. And because of that, the sellers, let's get our houses out there and get them listed so that these people do have somewhere to go. Yeah. Um, and it's very, very important to talk to Al Crawford also to make sure that we can get that mortgage before we go ahead and list a house, because there's nothing worse than somebody going to a realtor, the realtor telling them to list the house, the house selling, and then next they find out they can't get a mortgage for a new home. It really yeah. puts somebody behind an eight ball. So I think that's really important. Yeah. And I, I think just to go back a little bit and touch on some of the stuff around fixing up the home. Um, well, my wife won't even get out of a car to look at a home if it doesn't have good curb appeal. And I know some of that's so personal, but some of it really is just a matter of cutting your lawn and edging and, and pulling the weeds and doing the, the stuff that, you know, let's be honest, that we should be doing every day, but just make sure it's ready to go for those first few times. You know, the trend has been all summer, Mark, um, to, you know, pre-list those homes and say coming soon and in that coming soon time really do some of that work are you you just lubricated that the market's slowing a little bit is the strategy chained on an offer or is it still the same no i still think it's a good idea for exactly that you go through the um the first meeting again we sit and talk about making sure they can get a home the next home before they sell this home talk about their goals and their plans but we also want to be prepared so that when the photographer does come out the home's ready so I do like the coming soon um, type of listing. So that does give us three to four, sometimes five days prior so that we know what we're going to list it for. We know what we need to do because we sat and talked. And then those three or four days are when the seller gets to execute the things we talked about. Yeah. You know, I, um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to go back to, to Al. I'm going to ask you, hey, what? So if you're looking to... Um, do a pre-approval where somebody's buying a home, what kind of conversations should they be having around their finances? Uh, you know, like how much equity or where maybe some other alternative money can come from. How do you start that with our members? Al? In every conversation I have with my, with my members, the, the first question I'm asking is what is it they're looking for? And, and, and when I, I also ask what's their budget. So a lot of times I'm going to say, what is a payment that's affordable? And people in many cases don't think about that. They'll put a value. They'll say, I want 300,000, I want 400,000. But their budget is the most important part of it because it's gotta be affordable to them. So I'm always asking, what's that budget? What's the number that they have as far as from a monthly payment goes? And then we're getting into the credit and their income and ultimately assets so that we can kind of do a combination to see what is gonna be the best structure for a mortgage for these people. So that when they have that pre-approval, 
I need it to be bulletproof because the last thing you ever want to do is to make an offer on a home and then it not be able to be closed. And so yeah. that, that upfront conversation is so critical for everybody's success. Yeah, wonderful. And I did, um, Mark, I did read uh, that this was in April. So these are a little old, but 47% of US homes were on the market less than a week before going pending. Um, and we alluded a little bit that that's slowing down, but just in the first two quarters, 76% of those homes that were on the market, they sold in less than a month. 70%, over 70% had sold less than a month. So what are you guys seeing today in the market around selling homes? What should a seller expect for a home that's, they've done the work, they've updated, they kept the long cut, they're in a nice, you know, affordable neighborhood. What, what should somebody expect today? Well, the supply of available homes is still going to be um, very under what's needed. There's way more buyers than there are sellers. Um, everything that I've read through gen or the Macomb Association of Realtors um, basically says that we're going to have at least another two years of undersupply. So I still think we should see any home that's priced well, that's shining and looking good, um, will still go in a week to two weeks. Um, not seeing as many multiple offers as we did in the past, but things were really getting crazy there for a while. We were seeing 10 to 20 offers within a matter of a day or two, um, and things have slowed down. So for the buyers, that's a good thing. For the sellers, as long as we, you hire a professional that can give you the correct way to go and the correct plan to get that home sold, it's still going to happen within a week or two. So Mark, how do you determine sales price? What goes into that? I know a lot of people kind of think they know what their house is worth based on what's happening in their neighborhood, but everybody may have a different opinion. So how does it a professional, I know there's a lot that goes into it, but what are the main functions of pricing a home correctly? Well, we do a lot of the same things that an appraiser does. We draw from the same places the appraiser does. Um, I've been doing this again for 35 years. So I've talked to many appraisers. I've taken many appraisal courses. So I know what they look for. Um, we're gonna, any, any of the things that are improvements to the house, a brand new kitchen, a brand new bath is going to increase the price. Um, sometimes a built-in pool can even increase the price. And people are told that pools do not. An above-ground pool will not increase value, but it may make the house sell quicker because somebody may want that pool. Whereas a built-in pool will definitely increase your value. A finished basement makes a big difference. Um, absolutely make a difference. A newer furnace, a newer hot water tank, Newer roofs, newer windows, it all um, comes together to create the best sale. Um, I still think we've got a lot of time in this good market. I think we got probably till Thanksgiving before things really slow down. So now might be the great, great, great time to talk to Alice and make sure you can get a mortgage for your next property and then give me a call so that we can create a plan for yours. Yeah, and driving that activity, Al, or at least supported it, is rates. I mean, I saw... 30 year uh, conventional rates at three or just below three here again last week. Uh, and they may have tipped up just a hair now, but what are you seeing as far as affordability? You know, the difference between three and 5% for somebody could mean the world, right? Yeah, we've seen, and even in some of the 15 year stuff is in the twos again. So we've seen some crazy, you know, as far as low rates and affordability changes, but I wanted to add upon, um, we were talking about that pre-approval as Mark said, there's a lot of a lot of people looking and buying for those homes. And that's really where the strength of your pre-approval letter comes in. I just want to touch on that real quick, is that when you are one of 10 offers, the stronger your pre-approval is, the more opportunity you have. And so the, the, the more power I can put into that pre-approval for you is going to tick you up on that list as far as being acceptable. And so that's another thing. And, and also, if somebody is talking about making offers over the asking price, can they afford it? What's their budget? And so that's an important conversation to have. So that when I'm looking at their assets to say, hey, if you're going to get in a bidding war, what's the room you have? Because you can't borrow that extra money. That's out of your pocket. And so I think that goes hand in hand as far as not just the affordability, but also what the realistic number is so that if they get in a bidding war, they understand the limits that they have to play with. Yeah. The last thing we want is to go from owning a home to going to homeless. <laughs> that would be yeah, good. Absolutely. Certainly. absolutely. Uh, so it really does to come down to being prepared. So Al, you just said it, bulletproof. What, what does a member need to give you or work with you on to make their offer bulletproof? 
basically it's going to be we're going through the credit if there's any issues or, or concerns and we have to address those um have they applied for any new credit you know are there inquiries things that we need to, to contend with have they bought a new car or something um that tends to have rear its head a lot during the during this time um but most importantly looking at their income um if there's been issues with covid um we need to address why is income lower what are the things that that mattered in that so that we can make a proper presentation underwriting um to explain their circumstances but it's going to be, are they using money from a 401k or retirement? Is it accessible? Are they borrowing that money? So it's all about taking a look at their entire financial situation, understanding where the proceeds are coming from, verifying that the income is solid, verifying um, that, you know, we're, we're going to always look at, especially because of COVID, the last two weeks. And where are we in the last two weeks? Are we, are we still working? Have we been laid off? Um, those are things that we critically have to have and things that we're always going to verify. Um, at least for the near future. Yeah, and that, and that advice a lot of time comes up with first time home buyers, but nobody really thinks about that second or third mortgage when they sell their first home and their second home and the next. It's the same process. It just literally right. is your equity might be coming from a fixed asset that you're selling. And we'll certainly be able to document that even in a back-to-back a, a -back closing, but all those other things add uh, certainly depth to your pre-approval. Um, you know, making sure. So um, documenting in this age today, so much of our stuff is e-statements and it's, you know, we'll talk to members and say, well, I don't have a copy of that or I don't have a copy of this. Starting to build those, those hard copy files or either or electronic files for our loan officers and keeping them ready for the appointment is, is key. So how many months of pay stubs do you collect, Dale? So I'm always going to be looking at the, the most, the two most recent pay stubs is really what I'm always asking for. Um, and then the last two years, um, W-2s, if it's tax returns, the last two years tax returns. Uh, if they're business for self, we're also gonna be asking for a profit and loss. Um, so it's a, it's a clear snapshot of, of what, where they are right now. Yeah, and a lot of times um, it's important to understand even if you have over 800 credit and you're putting 20% down, we may have limited documentation requirements once we find the house and make application. But in the pre-approval phase, somebody like Al, a professional, needs to collect all that information to make sure we have a complete picture so something doesn't pop up later uh, in some of the verification stages that we do in the mortgage. So really good. All right, switching gears now. So we've, we've talked about what we can do with the home uh, pre-sale to understand how it might move quicker or look better to a prospective buyer. We've talked about preparing your financial stuff. Now it's time to list the home, Mark. So what does that look like today? What's involved in, in somebody that contracts with you to sell their home as far as listing it? Well, the, the process really doesn't take long. Um, we go through a lot of that at the first meeting to tell them what to be prepared for when I come for the second meeting. The second meeting, we sit and talk about um, exactly where they want to go and the timing that's going to happen in. Um, the paperwork's going to take us maybe 30 to 45 minutes to complete. There's some forms called disclosure statements where the seller is going to tell what they do know and what they don't know about their home. All of it, so I can, again, I've been doing this 35 years, I can explain everything so that it's very easy to understand. Um, some people like to see the paperwork up in front. I have no problem getting that ready and sending it to them so they can be, pre be prepared for questions by the time I come back. But I did want to just jump in on something that you and Alan also said. I just had a call this morning about a house I sold on uh, Vista Way in Frazier that sold on an FHA mortgage through another mortgage company. And I found out that two days before the closing, they denied the mortgage. And I blame that on the mortgage company. They didn't do what they needed to do. They didn't ask the proper questions. There's a ton of companies out there that just throw the spaghetti against the wall to see if it's going to stick. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I've never had that experience with Al Crawford. He does his job thoroughly. Yeah, yeah I, we, we never say never in this business, but certainly, like I said earlier, loans are like fingerprints. You know, they're, they're all a little bit different. It does take professional experience to understand those questions that need to be asked uh, and to know when something early in the process doesn't look right and make sure all parties know. Um, this is a contract, a contract that you sign not only with the buyer and the seller, uh, it's a legal binding contract that we all have to 
conform to. So the better we do that, the better. I want to remember uh, too to our members that our chat box is open, Zareen. So I don't know if we have any questions yet, but we are coming up on our wrap up here. So uh, I know the time goes fast. And certainly um, listing a home is important. I think the, the number one thing I heard today is, is be prepared both financially and choose the professional wisely in your market to drive through that. So if uh, Zareen can share our screens there, there we go. So um, we'll take turns here. So Al, why don't you start? What are your top three things you want our members to remember when they're thinking about selling their home? Dan, thank you. Uh, the first is obviously your lender matters. You, you wanna find a loan officer that listens and can tailor a loan to your needs. Um, getting a pre-approval that they haven't verified anything <laughs> isn't a pre-approval. <laughs> Proactive on knowing how much you need to profit on the sale of your home, which we've, we've talked on before. And by far the most important thing that I can provide to you is that strong pre-approval. Yeah, and I, I'll jump in on that. You know, certainly a, a pre-approval means we have reviewed income and asset documents. We've reviewed the credit and we have, uh, as we know it today, we are saying that we would approve this loan based on uh, an underwriting finding. A pre-qual is an important tool, but a pre-qual really allows the member or the consumer to understand what they can afford given a certain circumstance, not what actually is uh, been verified. So good, good point of attention. So what else, Al? Um, again, I think that, you know, the lender matters, um, dealing with somebody like Michigan first, um, which I'm so proud to be a part of, um, knowing the, how much our members mean to us and understanding the process that we've put in place and has been built for our membership yeah. is something that I'm so proud of. That, um, I'm really happy to represent that this company and everything I do with Mark. Awesome. All right, Mark, what are your three tips? I think everybody has to really find an agent that they're comfortable with. And I think the interview process is the most important thing. Um, find out uh, from referrals from your friends. Um, I think if you call me and we sit down, I'll be able to show you why choosing me would be in your best interest. Um, I'm not going to just list your home. You're going to hear from me consistently throughout the process. I'm going to um, call you every Friday and give you an update on what's going on with the market. I'm going to share the feedback that the buyers that have looked at your house um, have shared with me. And then after the transaction is done, I'm also going to continue following up to make sure that all your needs and questions are taken care of. After the transaction. So to me, this isn't just a one-time thing. I would like to be your realtor for life. Um, I think you need to find a realtor that knows your market, somebody that's been around a while that knows the different things that can happen. Um, somebody that follows up on all the offers to make sure that the pre-approvals are correct and true. Um, there's a lot of benefits of having a realtor. In fact, when you compare a home that's sold by owner to a home that's sold to a realtor, Normally, and on average, a realtor will get you 14% more. So by you trying to save that 5 6 or 7%, you're actually losing money. Yeah, wow. That's, that's a pretty powerful statement. No doubt about it. I, I think that is. Um, I've been doing this not quite as long as you have, Mark or Al, but uh, going on 30 years. And I will tell you that um, using a professional is really the best way to go about it. This is a legal binding contract. And you got to think of your listing agent really as your representative in that transaction. So, uh, hey, I want to thank both of you for your time today. I know 30 minutes goes really quick. So, Al, thank you for joining and offering your expertise. Mark, I really appreciate that. Zareen, I think you put up the screen uh, how they can get a hold of them. Do you have that, their contact? You want to read on by it, I think, there. She's going to put up the screen how to get a hold of Al. I will tell you that from Michigan First Mortgage perspective, if you visit our website, all of our loan officers are listed there, including Al. You'll see his picture out there. And then ultimately, uh, Mark, I believe, has the contact screen somewhere there, right there. You see it? Yeah, there it goes. There you go. Awesome. So Mark's phone number is there, along with his, uh, his email address. Uh, to answer any questions. If you have questions about the format today, webinar, or anything that happened, please reach out direct to info at michiganfirstmortgage.com. Uh, Zarina and I monitor that and we'll, and we'll definitely get your answer back to you. 
Uh, if there was any questions that were asked that didn't, and you didn't get an answer today, we'll follow up with that. Again, go to our website, find a loan officer, uh, Al's picture's there. Choose one that you think will work for you or call us anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week at that number, 800-664-3828. Hit mortgage and you will be connected to somebody that can talk to you about mortgage here at Michigan First. So I want to wish you all a wonderful Thursday. Get out and enjoy the weather and have a great day. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.